remember seeing it and you would just go by it and see all of a sudden this uh, like intense amount of color. It was like a playground. It was an untouched playground for us to spray paint, have fun with. It was really well done and people obviously put a lot of effort into it. It was all, it was like really community based. It's constantly moving and morphing and... There was plenty of wall for everyone. The mural or the trackside gallery was just like it was really epic to me. People were spray painting initials. I didn't really paint. I wasn't like an artist kid, but you know, every time I would walk by there, there would just be these huge, huge graffiti pieces that were amazing. There was, there was quite a bit of uh, um, drug gang related kind of graffiti as well, or at least that's what the place felt. But it was pretty big. I imagine it was like, you know, two and a half or three football field lengths of, of walls to paint. I think I took it for granted at the time for how big it was. And only in retrospect do I realize that we have nothing like that anymore. Well, it's kind of failing now. You look at it now, well, the billboards are falling apart. They're smashed, there's paint thrown on them, there's overgrowth. And these things are just falling off and now they look bad. You know, we came down here to actually yeah. to look at some of the graffiti and it's a little disappointing to see it all painted over. Like, there seems to be like a number of different possibilities as to how it ended. I think that's kind of the point of this. It's like, no one, I don't think anyone has a clear picture of what ended the tracks. I went to Vic High, or pardon me, I went to Squimalt High School in 91, 92. And when you used to sit in the smoking pit, you could see to the back of the track side, to the warehouses. We decided we would go there and start painting, and eventually the whole city started coming. I think I first painted at the tracks in 1996. Back in the prehistoric times. 1997. We had the whole place to ourselves. Not one person walked through or by. Average day at the tracks, probably get up a little bit earlier than you regularly would. There would be other people coming down that wanted to paint, you'd meet new writers. Around noon, the sun would kind of hit the north side of the building, so you'd be in the shade. If you went out there, you wanted to do a good piece because there's a lot of good work there. You know, you'd wander down the tracks, seeing us all your friends painting. And In grade 11 or 12, there was a guy named TJ. You know, one year, tragically, he committed suicide. And some of the graffiti artists, I don't know who they were, but they dedicated a huge piece to him. And it was a great piece. There was a perception that it, uh, due to lack of maintenance, that it had become a free wall. It was a place to kind of come and do, uh, to, to do that type of, uh, I guess, art. So it was kind of like you can paint there, but you can't really paint there, you know? I'd say that it was like an orange alert, legal, sort of gray area. No, I don't, people walking by didn't mind. But, you know, yeah, the businesses weren't totally you know, stoked. I don't, I don't really think. I heard stories of people there at night, um, you know, getting beat up by cops. Stealth from IBC, the Ice Brothers crew, went there to paint as well and add to it. And when he hopped the fence and was painting, the police were called. They showed up and when it was fenced off, they put the dogs over the fence ahead of them. So the dogs ran ahead without the police there and ripped him apart, tore his clothes, ripped his face, like just mangled this poor kid. And I remember one year they changed it. Think of the cave paintings in Lesto, France, or the walls inside the Great Pyramid. The Rock Solid Foundation wants to promote young artists by creating a huge outdoor gallery on the Vic West Esquimalt border. You know, I guess it was part of the city wanting to like make it more beautiful or appealing to the community of Squamalt or, you know, for whatever the reason. We're planning to clean it up so that there's less vandalism, less uh, nighttime activity. Um, and the way that we're planning to do this is to beautify the area with a collection of murals. When they decided to make a big hullabaloo about making it legal, they had a few hot dog days and they got some people outside of the graffiti art community for the most part to do a bunch of paintings. And the idea was is that this would be a gallery as well, which uh, you know is a little bit different than what existed there in the past. The idea of a gallery is that it is 
it is uh, managed or you know that, that, that someone does administer what's taking place there. It just, it seemed irrelevant to me. You know, one of them's like a horse or something, and you know, other pieces, they didn't really, they didn't really fit the style, they didn't really fit the space or the time. As I said, it was perfectly fine before, and I don't really see why we needed a bunch of artwork installed above it. Uh, the stimulus for the organization to be established came out of um, a bunch of youth violence. You know, it used to have a lot of garbage, a lot of, not too many needles, but uh, with my own kids, we would go up there, but I, you did have to look for, um, you know, drug paraphernalia and be, be aware of that. So I think having it lit up, that's good. Rock Solid was trying to work with, like, the situation to make it better. I don't know, you know, inevitably it didn't work out in the end. I mean, I guess I was suspicious from the outset in that they were police organization liaisoning with graffiti art, so. You know, I always kind of wondered why there wasn't, you know, cameras in the bushes. They could have caught every writer in Canada painting at one point on camera, you know? So there was always that kind of question that we always thought about too. I, I was not gonna lie to you, I was scared to be involved with any of that. I remember there was a rock solid police car. It was like the fanciest police car around. Like it was like a Lamborghini. You know, to go hand in hand with the cops and you know, this utopic graffiti place. I wasn't, I didn't buy into it. Oh yeah, just to add to it, when Rock Solid got involved, they, ch they let their dogs chew a kid apart and try to cover up by going here, we'll make you this, this gallery. We don't want to make that same mistake again. But in a way, it kind of got swept over that they let a kid get ripped apart by two of their dogs. Because hey, we got a free graffiti spot for you. Now, how are you going to get people to actually get involved in this project? I mean, the people that have done this work already, uh, are they interested in helping? I think they might be, and we're also going to be looking for kids at elementary schools through high schools. Had the tracks just stayed the way it was, with no rock solid, no trackside gallery, just people going out there painting on a semi-legit level, it would probably still be going. I think they struggle with some funding issues kind of about the mid 2000s. The profile they played really, you know, they, there really was no profile after about 2005. And, and so it become almost uh, a free wall. Most saw it as a, as a fairly bad development. I, you know, I think one of the side effects to it was that without any sort of rules or management taking place, there was, there was a ton of bleed out. When all the lights started going out and it didn't get maintained, it just didn't have the same impact that it did when it first got installed. And I got a call from a friend who said that you should get down here right now. They're rolling all of our stuff in beige. And the piece that TJ, you know, was kind of memorialized in was painted over as well. And I just thought that was really sad. But I mean, it was done so hastily that it, it you know, it painted over you know, grass that was actually tall was painted over with it. I think for me it's just the way it was handled that that for me seems really disingenuine. Um, even more than just losing the space. It just left a sour taste in my mouth. You know, all the history and all the good times, it's, I don't know, it's kind of like, kind of like your home going down there and your house is on fire or something, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. All of a sudden, one day, someone's like, have you seen the tracks, man? It's all buffed. I was just kind of like, what? Yeah, whatever. Sure, it's rolled over. Just go paint it again. Like, what? It, you know. Pretty much everyone else would go down there and bomb the tracks because they're so pissed about it. And then the next day, E-Tag would come through and just paint over everything. It couldn't easily be painted overnight by the artists. It takes a long time to do a piece, you know, so well, longer than it does to buff the tracks. I went up maybe once or twice after, and I was followed by a guy who was not part of that community. He might have been an undercover cop. I have no clue. He just followed me from the end all the way, kept his distance, and just watched what I was doing. And then I just left. You know, at the end of the day, it didn't do anything other than making all these writers with a whole bunch of spray paint go elsewhere and paint in Victoria. <laughs> That's all it really did. Pushed them out of the cage and into the wild, right? So All I know is that I heard that a community group 
or vigilante group, if you want to, uh, decided that the neighborhood didn't like it and that they were going to paint over it. I, I have no clue why these people do what they do. The amount of paint they put on that wall is probably double to what we've put on it. It's silly. I mean, it's like, come on, we're talking about coloring on surfaces here. <laughs> like, don't we have anything better to worry about? I love about? that. What? I love coloring I know, we're, myself. Yeah, we're talking about coloring and, um, on things in public so everyone can enjoy it. To me, they're just a figment of somebody's imagination with a name. Da 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 da! Hey, e tag. Let's get together and wipe out the trackside gallery. I knew that it wasn't the city just because of the color that they picked and uh, because they didn't do anything around the sides where the actual bleeding was happening. They just took out all the good stuff first. Yeah, those kids paint. Well, we can paint too. Yeah, we'll wipe out everything they've ever done. Wow. It's possible that they wanted the wall to be illegal, but first they went through a big rigmarole to say they were making it legal and invited the Times colonist and smiled and had some hot dogs and then got it to be illegal. I can't say if that's true. I'd just love it if someone would tell me what exactly happened, you know, be honest about it. E-Tag never ran into me. I've never run into them. I have no idea who they are. I have no faces. Who is funding this? Why they care so much? Hi, you've reached Michael Reed, facility operations supervisor for the township of Esquimalt. Please leave me a message and I will return your call as soon as possible. As a director of, uh, of the Parks and Recreation Department, I was involved with a bunch of people in the community in putting together uh, an Esquimalt uh, Against Graffiti initiative. It was called E-Tag, which was kind of Esquimalt, uh, you know, to control tagging. We probably had a couple hundred people show up and uh, <clears throat> Um, provided them with, uh, you know, particularly the community members with a little bit of training about how to eliminate the graffiti, um, and then sent people out into the community and actually, you know, did work on the particular day. When, when we did paint outs, for example, we would have mayor and council out shoulder to shoulder with us actually doing the work. I don't think they represented the lower, like, working class folks of Esquimalt. I think they represented this idea that graffiti or tagging was um, not okay, that art wasn't okay, and that this certain form of expression wasn't okay. It wasn't painting over the art that uh, uh, Rock Solid had, had put up on panels, it was painting over graffiti so that, uh, you know, the, the art that had been put on panels could be at least, you know, kind of be the focal point on those walls. You know, we were hearing from the people who hired us, who made our jobs, who, you know, cr created our, our, our uh, daily work that, you know, here's what, a, here, here's what an acceptable standard is for us and this wasn't meeting the standard. I think the Squimalt Together Against Graffiti initiative is, I think it has some purpose and I think there are places where um, where graffiti is it doesn't look good and where it's inappropriate and so I think it's important to have a group like that and to have them um, you know looking out for those places where it's not useful but an area like this I I think it was kind of misused they didn't stamp out graffiti by buffing the tracks they didn't they just, just stamped out a bunch of like you know fun you know, I saw the impact that it had on some of the kids that I used to work with in, in the teen center, and it wasn't okay. It was just another form of policing or criminalizing their behavior. You know, an, another form of their life that was criminalized that, um, that didn't help anybody. I'll be honest with you, if the only crime that's happening in any neighborhood is graffiti, then they were doing pretty darn good. So uh, I don't think that graffiti is going to lead to more crime. You know, I mean, I just kind of saw it as one more thing to add to the fact that the city didn't think it was a nice neighborhood. You look at it now, with the billboards are falling apart, they're smashed, there's paint thrown on them, there's overgrowth. Like I said before, I think the tracks look worse now than, than they used to. I miss the art. I'm gonna miss the art always, you know? 
even if a business owner wants to have artwork on the outside of their business, the, the bylaws make it a hassle for them to have that because of certain stigmas, basically from a minority groups. It, it, and sometimes you, you don't always make the best decisions because you might have a small group that's driving an agenda. I think they actually bullied a bunch of businesses in the downtown area to, to remove the graffiti. And, are, and still are. <laughs> when we first rented the school space, I was told that the school board had to hire someone to come by the school once a month to remove the tagging. So then when I was approached by a graffiti artist about doing the back wall, I thought, well, that'll save the whole tagging thing. And it just seemed like it would also open up the space, like make people feel welcome. Well, if you're breathing, you surviving. That's how people live and die. Give me facts and I hold on to stay my head. Makes me stronger. I would probably ask my daughter to have a little space there to paint her own art. Or beside her, I'm going to paint my own art. So I think it would be great to have a place where, um, where that could be done appropriately and without fear of, you know, getting in trouble or causing issues or any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they, they could, you know, both the both the funded and the non-funded art could cohabitate. I don't know, Do we, if we want the tracks back? That's a good question, I might ask. Can I just say one more thing, please? And, you know, I think I was telling you on the phone, I, I, I'm not sure what it looks like today, whether that's been maintained or... No one painted there ever again. I know that there's a bunch of kids that have been arrested painting there now. Can I just say one more thing? One more. <laughs> um, what I've learned in graffiti is, it's not about holding on to one thing. It's about moving on and fix and, and finding new things. You know, I mean, there's not a big stretch of train tracks that has the wall space that that has down right in town. But maybe there's something else. Maybe, you know, that, that's it's up to us to keep on pushing and keep on growing and finding the new thing. And thank you very much. My name is Peter Allen. <laughs> This is Olive, and we're here saying peace. <laughs> sparkle on. We're gonna hit the swimming pool and get rid of these sparkles. Oh,